Yebo, Yebo, welcome to Watch Me Build It. This evening, I'm doing a head-to-head -head with two watches that I built. I want to speak a bit about the inspiration. Inspiration hit me on Black Friday last year. I have a friend who I was speaking to about my newfound hobby, and he was quite excited with me about it. And I was inspired by his watch choices. And traditionally, I've seen he enjoys a diver's watch uh, from time to time, as well as a chronograph. And um, I've seen him choose one or two watches that are quite monochrome in their appearance. So I thought to myself, I'd like to see if I could build something that would appeal to him. So I went looking around the internet to find inspiration. And I found two sources of amazing inspiration. In 2016, Rolex released a new Yachtmaster at Basel World called the Rolex Yachtmaster 40 116622. An amazing piece. Stainless steel construction, platinum bezel, grey sunburst dial with a light blue second hand. Absolutely beautiful. I thought I've got to see if I can do something just like that. It turns out that the Bleger store sells a watch that is a direct homage for that one. It didn't even require any building. However, I have this love hate relationship with the um, Mercedes hands. So I thought I'd get hold of a set of sword hands and put a sword hand onto this watch. That was the extent of the build. The second one that I saw was called a Yachtmaster Triple Red, built by a company named Titan Black. The Titan Black offering costs 23,000 US dollars. Um, there was a beautiful homage to the Submariner in PVD with the black Yachtmaster type bezel, but it was running the ordinary Mercedes hands. I found a set of black Mercedes hands. Instead of loom, it's got black paint. Um, and I thought that would be amazing. And then I also decided to put a little bit of red into it as well. So I bought a strap with some red on it and uh, painted the tip of the second hand red. And I decided to paint the triangle red to hark back to some of those earlier uh, Submariners, the big crowd subs. And um, I put them together and I showed them to my friend. I want to show them to you now. And I want to hear what you think. So let's flip the camera. Let's take a look at the yin yang build. One black and one silver. So here we go. We're beginning, of course, with my friend Johan Smith. Hope um, you're getting a piece of, uh, of, of, of outdoor freedom. Okay, can you smell the grass? <laughs> can you smell the blue sky? There it is. Just a bit of beauty for you wristwatch check i am wearing the antique 40 mil diver of the valley express with its bi-directional bezel it's beautiful beautiful plexiglass crystal it's matte dial no date stunning stunning piece let's get into it folks first we have Yin, a beautiful monochrome, all silver and grey yacht master homage. Cost me 115 US dollars. That's the unit with the Miyota 8215 movement. Um, in the build, I put a sword minute hand on, but the rest of it is left as was out of the store. What have we got for Yang? Yang, we have another monochrome offering, all black, except for two little accents of red. You could buy this all black PVD 40 mil diver off of the Bliga store for 120 US dollars. That's running the Mio to 8215 movement. Added to that, I used a set of hands that are called the Silver Edge Black Hand they cost me $6.60. I also bought a carbon fiber silicon watch band from a Yang Kui store for $18.47. I'll show that to you a little bit later, but tonight I'm doing this review on the original black bracelet. So let's climb into it and do a bit of dimension. Width 40.7 millimeters thickness without the magnifying 
um, without the Cyclops, 13.4 millimeters. Lug to lug, 47.2. You'll notice I've still got the blue protective coating on here because I'm gonna sell this watch. That's not standard, it does come off. And lug width, 19.7, but fundamentally 20 millimeters. How do those dimensions compare with Yang? 40.3. 13.4, 47.1, 20mm lug width. In other words, these two watches are identically sized. So as is my custom, we're going to do this review outside in, beginning with buckle and strap. Each of those is worth 10 points. So what have we got for the buckle over here? It's the standard issue, Parnas homage, to the Rolex buckle. It's got a spring, a spring portion over there. This one hooks very well. Nothing wrong with uh, the way that this ho hooks in. The safety keeper clicks into place nicely. Of course, there's no coronet because this is a homage watch and not a fake watch. I'm all for a homage and I cannot stand the idea of a fake. If uh, you want a real one that badly, save up and buy it. If you can't afford it, then don't pretend that you can. Okay, and beautifully on these, both of these have got the same function, but there's a glide lock. Once you have a look over there, they PVD'd this one <laughs> with the glide lock in the most extended position, and so that's one of the places you can see the quality giveaway. But this glide lock works really well. It finds its place easily enough. Um, the detailing on the buckle, really good, beautifully brushed. There's not much about this buckle that I cannot recommend. It's quite sharp. That corner is quite sharp. The quality is better than some of the other buckles I've had on this configuration recently. Then how about the strap? Strap again, it's the classic harness offering. So that means a really good strap. It's solid links screwed in. I really think the brushing on this particular unit is really good considering it's a PVD unit. Um, fitment is reasonable between the lugs, not a pure match but more than acceptable. Around the back of course as they always do we've got solid end links easy to adjust the strap and it wears well um, so buckle and strap on this one on yin sorry i got it wrong earlier this is yin <laughs> uh, yang is the white and yin is the black if i'm not mistaken so buckle and strap i'm going to give this buckle i'm going to go high i'm giving this a seven and the strap i'm going to give a seven as well fundamentally the identical model, but this is in silver. Safety keeper, clips open, clips closed, with a solid action. Have a look at the, the spring-loaded action on this. Did you see it give and take? Got the mold, the mold clasp and uh, glide lock on the bottom sharp edges as you often find on these. Moving down to the strap. Really good brushing on here. Sorry about fingerprints and that sort of thing. You can see this watch has been worn a little at the bottom as well. Maybe some bits of quality on the edge but that might be due to wear. Beautiful screwed links, a real doddle to adjust. So what are we going with over here? For Yang, it's only fair to give the same, isn't it? Because they're both equally well done. Let's have a look at case back and movement. Surprise, surprise. March to the Rolex. As interesting as dry toast. Highly polished on that particular uh, circle 
linear brushing over there and then rotational brushing on the actual back of the case. Um, but yes, case back, it's neither here nor there. I really don't think they're fantastic, um, but they do the job well enough. And besides, you never see them. Movement, is this one noisy? Not as noisy as the most recent one I've, I've evaluated. That was a Seagull ST1612. This is a Miyota 8215, but there is, you can hear rotor noise on this watch. Um, the, the crown screws on well enough, it pops out. Um, yeah, quick set date. No hacking, that was the setting position. And it is hand winding. So it's kind of halfway uh, between the Seagull ST1612 and um, the 7S26 of Seiko, which has got no hand winding either. Great movements, it's got about 50 hours of power reserve. Um, accuracies, uh, I don't know what the rated accuracy is, but these are running, I think it was about plus 11 a day, more or less. And both watches are running the same, the same movement. So I like these Miyota 8215s. My default score for a Seagull ST1612 is 16, unless there's a problem with the movement. It's gonna be a 14 on the Miyota. You're gonna cringe for that. I don't see any substantial quality difference between these two movements. However, the lack of hacking is quite a penalty that you pull on the Miyota 8215. On the case back, I'm going for a normal vanilla number five on the case back. Um, I'm not, I tell you what, I'll give you a visual on the case back for yin or for the stealth um, and uh, just so you can see, but it's going to get the same scoring. Um, while I'm calling these yin and yang, I'm also calling them stealth and style. Case back, as you can see, Rolex Homage, nothing special about it. We're running the same movement. Um, this one screws down well too. Um, date, uh, quick set date, there we go. Really not a problem at all. Um, setting position over there. Um, but as you would have noticed, no hacking at all. But we've got hand winding. So let's get that back where it belongs. Right, so. On yen, I'm gonna give five for the case back, 14 for the movement. You can see this is gonna be close, right? Okay, let's get down to case. Case, finishing, fit, finish, all those good things. What are we dealing? Typical Rolex over here. You've got brushed lug tops, polished sides, I need to point out this is a Submariner homage case. It's not the Yacht Master, which I find a pity. The Yacht Master's got the beautiful curved profile. I just find that a lot more elegant. Um, coming around here, crown guards are done well enough. They're polished all the way through. And there's no discernible bevel that is often the hallmark on a Rolex. But the case is nicely sized. Um, I find, you know, it's, it's running your 40 mil with 13 mil thickness. And um, I really find that an appealing case size um, on both of these. Personally, I like to go slightly bigger. I'll go up to 41 or 42, but the 40 works quite well. If I'm going to be honest though, I find, I find these, these cases a little too clinical. Um, they could do with a little bit more pizzazz. They're so classic, they're so well loved, but really not a lot um, to excite the imagination. Moving on to the bezel and the crystal. So the crystal is a flat, pure flat. It's got a cyclops. It's a sapphire crystal. The bezel, ceramic Yachtmaster bezel um, insert. Um, I quite like it, it works very well in the black. Um, I painted the red, the red triangle onto, onto the, um, the index over there. 
I don't know if it was the best move, but I figured that that, along with the red tip that I painted onto the second hand, would just give a little bit of a, a bit of a pop. And like I said, it was inspired by the triple red. Uh, the triple red obviously doesn't have the red triangle. The triple red has a full red second hand. It's got red text at the bottom, and they've done the date wheel in red. Um, bezel itself, let's just count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it would seem it's a 120 click bezel. A good solid click action. I didn't realign this one. Um, its alignment's pretty decent. So I just think I, I overshot it there. There is a modicum of black back play, but actually a very solid bezel. So case and bezel on this. Wow, this is this is tough. Um, case out of ten, I, I, I can't go higher than a six or a seven, um, simply because there's nothing fundamentally inter interesting and nothing fundamentally wrong. So I'm going to go with six over there. Bezel, good solid bezel. A bit of interest in the in the monochrome in the monochrome uh, bezel insert the crystal's a good solid crystal but there's no dome on it nothing interesting over there so those collectively are worth 15 i'm gonna i'm gonna give it 11. right while i'm here let's do hands and dial oh i hope you heard that that ladies and gentlemen reverberating in the background is the world famous high felt thunderstorms of Johannesburg. They are a spectacle to behold. Coming into what I think is the strength of this watch, hands and dial. So it's a, it's a, a matte black dial, matte black indices surrounded in silver and uh, you've, got your, you've got your hash marks all the way around. Um, and I just, I think that monochrome look is incredible. Uh, I'd love to know what your thoughts are. I'm going to zoom in a bit over here. I'd love to get your feeling on it. And then when I saw this handset, I thought I just simply had to have it. A black handset with silver edging. And where this really works nicely is in the sunlight. In the sunlight, those hands really stand out nicely. The downside of this, it's got two downsides. I'm going to insert a loom shot. There isn't any loom to speak about. There's no loom on this particular um, watch. And the other downside is legibility. Um, you've got to take a bit of time to look at the hands and the bezel to, to get what they're telling you. But overall, the aesthetic, I think, is, is rather appealing. My little nine-year-old Joel has said to me, Daddy, this is my favorite watch that you've built. So hands and bezel are worth 15. I would have given 13, other than the fact that the legibility and the loom knock it. So I'm going to give it a, ah, those are two bad marks. I'm going to give it an 11. Yang, tell me about your case finishing. Once again, classic Rolex. We've got brushing on the lugs, polishing on the sides. No bevel along the edge though. And once again, it's the Submariner and not the Yacht Master. Unfortunately, of course, I've picked up some blemishes, but th there's a problem. Can you see, there we go, can you see that? That, I think, has to do with the polishing on this lot. So I think that's a minus mark over there for the case on this one. Um, turning it round, yeah, just, they're beautiful cases, but as I've said before, not a lot of interest over there. Um, bezel, um, once again, we'll count, yes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we've got 120 click bezel, barely any back play. Listen to the click. Nice solid click. Not not cheap and nasty. Sorry, I overclicked, but it aligns nicely. The little issue I've got with this particular bezel. Um, is this grainy look on, the, on the, the matte steel. I have one on a different watch um, and it's, it's got a far more professional look to it. So that, to my mind, makes it look a little bit cheap. Sapphire, precisely the same as the other one. 
a perfectly flat sapphire with the cyclops. So if we're going now um, for case out of 10, I'm going to give this, I'm going to give it, ah, I don't know, huh. from a style perspective, I think it does more than the black case, but that blemish on the edge loses it a mark. So I'm going to give it the same as the black case, but for different reasons. Bezel and crystal, although I've spoken about the grain being a detraction, I love this bezel. I love the Yachtmaster bezel inserts because they're not typical. And I specifically love the black and the silver. Um, just, uh, I, I, I think there's something special. What I like is the way that the light catches these numerals and the hash marks. Um, outside in the sunshine particularly, they are very alluring. Um, I prefer this bezel and crystal combo. Um, just a little bit, I'm going to give it a 12 over the, as against the 11 on the yen. Right, hands and dial. So, this in my opinion is where Yang runs away from Yin. Um, I'm going to zoom in here. Hands and dial. But look at the sunburst effect on this, I don't know, platinum dial, platinum colored dial. It is spectacular. Absolutely enchanting. I um, put the sword hand on here instead of the Mercedes and I'm very happy with that. I think the Mercedes actually does a great job here, but the sword is magnificent. And again, as I mentioned in another video, the, the graphic on the Mercedes hand picks up on the circular and triangular plots nicely. Well, the sword hand is a nice triangle that echoes the triangle on the hour hand. But the party trick, the absolute star of the show has to be this baby blue second hand. It is, I'm blown away at what this tiniest, tiniest um, smidgen of color can do. And to choose something like this baby blue was just absolute genius. So the hands and the face on this watch um, have to be some of the best that I have seen to date on what any of the builds that I've done. Of course, I can't go in a sugar. Um, that's a good South African word, in case you hadn't noticed, and give it a 15. But I'm going to go a bit crazy and I'm going to give it a 13. And that brings us down to the X factor. So there we have them, Ying and Yan, black and white. How do these two compare? What are the X factors like? Wow, I like both of these watches. I must say they're not the first watches I reach for in my watch box. Why not? This one is very casual. Being stealth, it's not the most suitable for business attire. So it's it's um, cross purpose. It's so its usability is a bit more limited. Um, whereas the Yang is very widely usable. I can do that in t-shirt and shorts. I can do it in a beautifully smart suit. Not that I do a smart suit very often, um, but it's it's a lot more versatile. Um, the the yin, it's got character, it's got presence, it's, it's, it's saying something about your specific decision to choose that watch. And I think from that perspective, it's, it says a lot. Um, Yang, by the same token, is very unique. It's not a Submariner, but it looks so much like one. So, X Factor, out of 10, I am going to go... I've got to say, this one's a big X factor for me. I'm going to go 8 out of 10 on this one. And I'm going to go just slightly down. I'm going to go 7 out of 10 for Yin. So, in total, we're looking at a score of 72 for Yang. And we're looking at a score of 68 for Yin. Or 72 for Style and 68 for Stealth. So, it's not the smallest margin we're going to find. But by an unignorable margin, the Yang takes it from Yin tonight. Here's a Yin wrist shot. Beautiful. A bit of glint, a bit of glisten, but when the light's not on it, it fades to black. Have a look at those hands. They are actually rather legible when the light is right. And um, it sits nicely. I have just over a seven inch wrist, great sizing. And Yang's wrist shot, you see what I mean about style? 
bit of pop, a bit of pizzazz, a bit, bit of presence over there. Look at that dial. Beautiful, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous watch. And this is in with the carbon fiber strap off of the Yankee watch store. That's a really, really, really great strap. I think it was $17, the purchase. I chose it because of the red and the complement between the red. I do find that this red is so strong, it makes the second hand red disappear. And that's how it carries on the wrist. A really great offering. And I think it complements the watch well. Gives it a sportier, more casual look. So, what do you think? 68 to 72. Quite a close contest. There are so many ways in which these two watches are identical. The same strap, the same buckle, the same case, the same bezel, the same bezel insert, but everything is just done in a different color. Even the dial, the indices, the shapes, they're all exactly the same, the same movement, but two entirely different products. I've enjoyed this build. I've enjoyed seeing what can come of it and um, it's really been a lot of fun. If you like either of these, if you'd like me to build one of them, have a look, uh, send an email to my email address that's in the bottom of the screen now. I've also got it in the links below. Um, but please, you don't need to buy a watch for me. I don't need to build a watch for you. You can build your own watch, and I'd love it if at least you liked, subscribed, and made a comment. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Folks, thank you, go well, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next episode.